Mitch Tram here. Today we're going to take a look at how to correctly Texas rig a soft plastic. This is really easy, but there's some misconception on how to do it. So I'm going to take you through the proper way to do it. Um, should just take a minute here and it's a very productive lure. So it's something everybody should know how to do. Okay, so from the standpoint of Texas rigging, you can Texas rig really any type of soft plastic. Um, and then you can either rig it weighted or not weighted. So if you're gonna rig it weighted, you have multiple choices. You can use a brass weight, you can use a lead weight, you can use a small weight, you can use a large weight. It just depends on how fast you want it to fall. And from a hook standpoint, most of the time, you're gonna use these type of hooks. These are offset worm hooks. Um, this is a wide gap, and this is just a straight hook. But you can use just a regular old straight hook to Texas rig. You also can use a bead to Texas rig. A bead adds a little bit of a clacking sound as the weight falls and hits the bead. And something else that you can do is you can peg it, which basically stops the weight from moving. So let's go through the process of going ahead and setting up a Texas rig. I've got my line right here. And we're just gonna put a small lead weight on here. So I'm gonna put that on here, right here. And then I'm gonna use one of these offset worm hooks. And we're gonna tie, uh, tie a polymer knot. So I'm gonna stick the line through, make a loop, stick it back through. And then I'll just go ahead and finish, finish this knot now I'll create a video on this knot because it is a great knot. It's one of the strongest knots and easiest knots to tie. Um, but for day, today, I'm not going through um, how to tie it. I'm just gonna go ahead and tie it. Now, one thing, anytime you tie any knot, you wanna make sure that you wet the line. So I have some water here. And the reason, that, reason you do that is that lubricates the line and keeps you from damaging it when you're cinching it up. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and clip our line right here. And now you could have put a bead on here and that bead would give it a clacking sound as the weight slid down the line. I didn't do that, but it is an option. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of our soft plastics here and I'm just gonna use this curl tail worm here. And what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna put it on about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't put enough of the worm on the hook for the first part. And then once you get it on about that much, you go ahead and pull the worm through. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull it until this offset piece comes out. So we're actually pulling the hook into the worm. And then we see our offset piece right there. So now we just have line coming out. And the reason for that is when your weight hits, it becomes or looks like one piece as opposed to if your hook is sticking out the front here, the eye of your hook, if it's sticking out the front there, then the weight sets on top of that and it doesn't look as natural. Also, you don't have as much of the hook on the worm. You're only going in maybe a quarter of an inch when you're doing that. And then that's a real easy way to tear your worm right here. So you always wanna do about three quarters to an inch of worm and then pull your hook through. That way it's stronger right here as well as you have a nat more natural look. Now, you have to put the worm through or the hook through the worm, sorry. So I typically put my finger right where I want that to go through and where I want it to sit. And that way I know where I'm gonna push my hook through. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there we have it. Perfectly done. Now the next thing you want to do is it's not quite weedless yet. So the next thing you want to do is skin hook it. And the way you do that is you pull the worm in this direction and you just barely stick the tip of the hook into the worm. And there you have it, skin hooked. So now you are completely weedless with your Texas rig. And when a bass hits that, since it's just barely hooked right there, it'll pop right off. And you'll go ahead and hook that fish. So that's how you do a Texas rig. And the last thing I was talking about was called pegging it. And what you do to peg it is you take a toothpick and you put it in right here and then you break it off. I don't have a toothpick, but I have a little stick which will work just as well. So you just stick it down in there and then you break it off. And now the worm weight is connected directly to the worm and it looks like it's one piece. Now, why would you wanna do that? Um, some presentations, you want it to look like one piece. Um, and there's some, you know, almost just preference one way or the other. Some people feel like you get a better action and a more natural action by having the weight not pegged. Others feel just the opposite. So you can try it both ways. I honestly typically fix fish mine not pegged where the weight is loose and the weight falls and the worm follows it. Um, also, if you're using a bead to create that clacking sound, you wouldn't want to have it pegged because you want that weight to slide up against and hit that bead. And when you're using a bead, you can use a plastic bead, but they also make glass beads and glass beads give a better um, clacking sound. Um, so totally up to you, but super easy to rig a Texas rig and one of the most productive baits, in my opinion. If you're talking, you know, bass baits, it's, it's definitely in the top three or five baits you should be using. Um, this is something else I want to show you. Some worms have a channel in them, and I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Um, that channel right there is a hook channel. So there are some baits that have that, so the hook sits down in there and makes it weedless, and you don't have to do the skin hooking. And like I said, you can also use really any type of soft plastic. You can even do this with a grub, and you can also do it with a straight hook. So with a straight hook, you just kind of change the angle slightly um, since you don't have that offset to get that hook in there. And this grub is a little bit too small for this hook. Notice where it's at. But, you know, just to give you that idea, you definitely can use a straight hook. So, you know, if you don't have any offset worm hooks and you want to try a Texas rig, feel free to do it with a straight hook. You can absolutely do that. Um, so I will be creating another video shortly, um, and I'll put it in the description on how to fish the Texas rig. But I first just wanted to show you how to rig one. Like I said, one of my favorite rigs, definitely one of the top five rigs for bass fishing. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, leave me some comments. Subscribe to my channel for more great content. Thanks, everybody.